Hello everyone, here PSST.1. Today another interview with an Argentinian artist, Lucas Gutierrez. His works are focused on the 3D world. He uses 3D in real time for audio video performance. He designs stage. He also builds 3D sculpture. So, enjoy! девушка в СССР. О, спасибо. Да. Classic question. How did you start this job? Yeah, I started definitely. It was in maybe early 2003, 2004. Um, I was very linked to graphic design, but more in the autodidact way. And then suddenly a friend was involved in a club and asking me last minute if I have to, if I want to show something on live. It was basically my first approach with the night culture, night life culture. And yeah, I definitely jumped with my graphic designer skills into the live performance, but definitely all about Beijing, not more than, than this. Your main aesthetic is uh, the 3D world in general. How did you develop this style? I mean, the, the relation that lately I can, I can, uh, I found, let's say, I mean, in, in the early stages of my university, I was really into 3D and very technical design. And, and uh, I'm really fan of, of, of uh, yeah, 3D modeling as a new platform, or as a new uh, virtual ethnography. So my, my background as an industrial designer give me at, at least a, a series of tools that can that I found it more interesting to use in a different way. That's probably my relation with, uh, with the new tools that I'm using. And I choose tools not, not to be used as the way that I learned it. Probably I, that's why I started to do different things, especially about my visual uh, background career, let's say. It's, uh, it's definitely this kind of trend, uh, transition between how technical and detailed uh, and, and and, and design could be an element that in terms of real-time visualization, it could turn on another, in another perspective or like destroy the element, but still being precise in those topics. So probably this kind of link that I can find in the middle. But at the end, my performance is about, uh, again, about this, how precise we can be in this schizophrenic way of construction elements in real time. Because I have this background about being a specific concrete and real and what I'm doing as a digital artist is basically about respect this uh, uh, no control of elements but still knowing what's going on so that's more or less is what I call it probably my digital schizophrenia about what we get ready we know what's going on we did it we built it but when it happened it's, it's not so easy to respect that it's also running by their own so and then I found an aesthetic in the middle that probably 3D is more representative lately. I went back to the 3D war, but not using those tools anymore, just using another ones. So it's also about moving, probably, I don't know, the weather in my hometown. <laughs> it's been really late. <laughs> Your performance, uh, you don't take care only about visual, but also about audio. How did you deal with this? You started from music or you start from visual? Uh, I, I first uh, create the, the graphic concept. I'm definitely, let's say, probably like uh, my, music ba my, my music background is probably more strong about hearing than, than making. So let's say in my daily routine, I have uh, uh, graphic sketches and ideas. I compose elements. I also do like digital sculptures as a digital artist. So and. After this, I kind of understand what kind of product could land in, a, in an audiovisual immersive piece, or maybe a music video clip, or uh, or or was nothing, or just video. But definitely, my audiovisual show it's uh, it's created first in the visual part, and as soon as the visual are kind of uh, necessary for uh, this is schizophrenic way of being honest to something that you create and can be manipulated and also like live it alone. I developed some music parts that 
that is, is and lately I discovered it's pretty basic in the way that I create it because I'm not using it also in the, in the music. I don't know how musicians are using it, but my relation with the software are very visuals too. So it's kind of equalized of the the interfaces and work vertically or horizontally. It's uh, it's also live, so uh, and I'm still new, and I'm, that's why I'm choosing those fields. First audio uh, when I was doing more collaborations, but now when I'm working in my personal projects, I first decide the visual part, and then I uh, make music for it. Yes. As you say before, you don't only do visual, but also 3D sculpture, right? Yeah, sure. That was also like, again, and every time that I'm, <laughs> that I'm trying to link my, my current activities uh, and somehow my hometown, my career or my friends are always jumping and, and the process of what I'm developing. And lately I jumped, let's say, in digital sculpture. That means uh, more or less about parting of digital culture. Uh, how we add with, with the objects, so how much power we give to, the, to those objects and that, we, that can represent information in the future. So lately I'm doing some, uh, let's say I'm talking about digital debt or digital memories, also about these topics about how we remember information when it comes visually, if it's about frames, seconds or, or memories again. So that is one of the pieces that kind of kill the file and then a piece of the object that still make it untouchable. So it's basically um, this kind of surround, giving more structure to also give some context to what I'm talking about. Uh, and definitely my industrial design background appear again in this kind of composition, very precise of elements that, that have to be built, not only digitally, but it also have to be uh, manipulated and, 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 and touched by the by person by me in the first instance. Which softwares do you use? Let's say I start with uh, modulate in the beginning. I'm still playing with it as a video mixer. Let's say I bring all the lines or all the amplitudes to it. Uh, I also compose internally, and in terms of um, multi-screens or light design, I use ManMapper as a DMX, uh, also for multi-screen uh, setups. Uh, for audio, I started with Logic and Audio Munch, I guess it was the very it was the quite composer of the music. It's very like a noodle thing. Um, but now uh, I'm jumping into Ableton for portable reasons, I don't know. Maybe because it gives me the freedom to produce after graphical concepts and sketch in that time. And I mean, uh, I, I do use Apple Motion in terms of uh, compare with After Effects, but lately I'm jumping into Unity uh, since I decide to uh, rebuild an, an aesthetics based on 3D visualization or real time. Also like the topic about if the loop is dead or or if it have to be real time when we can when we work in real time. But again it's 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 a new tap in terms of performance and but definitely now uh, everything that I'm doing in terms of uh, 360 videos or uh, real-time visualization, also audio reactive installation is about Unity. Technically, it's uh, probably I would switch tools because uh, we, we just say in the beginning, it's very interesting. Well, it's super smart, uh, important that the tools should adapt to the artist and, and not uh, the other ways. Well, when, when I discovered that I'm really adapting or needing more the tool than, than, than probably the result, I switch them and, and I start with a new one. Uh, it really keep me awake and, and show me more uh, raw moments of, of creativity. That is another topic that it's also very on the on the blurry lines of what it is. But definitely, I think it's uh, that's the most important. Tools should adapt to the artist and not in other ways.